Hi, this is Wes Fryer in Lewiston, Maine, with the amazing Kern Kelly. I could ask Kern questions all night long, but I'm not going to. Uh, you were telling me a little bit about how your students are using iPod Touches to do their digital portfolio documentation. Uh, how, how's that working? Uh, it's worked well. Uh, one of the things that we really emphasize in our district is um, having students be in charge of digitizing their own work, taking ownership of it. Um, one thing that typically happens is uh, teachers do a lot of the work, especially when it starts digital stuff, they try to collect it and they're running around kind of, you know, being the secretaries for the students and we're working our way to do as much of little of that as possible as far as getting to the point where students are in charge of their own work, they're handing it in digitally, that's how they're digitizing it. Um, with the iPod Touches specifically, um, we use, students will uh, use the camera built into it, um, basically a classroom camera, uh, um, one camera, one uh, iPod Touch for the entire room and they'll hand it around, take take pictures of their non-digital work, let's say it's our work, let's say it's math, um, send it to themselves. Um, iPods um, have the ability to email photos right directly from the iPod, and we use uh, Picasso Web Albums, which can receive an image right directly to a single email address that's unique for each student. With that, the kids can put it right directly into their digital portfolios. The teacher basically just checks it, but they're not doing any of the legwork. They're not doing any of the work behind it. Awesome. Now, have you dabbled with, with audio doing that or, or video? Um, and, and, what are, and tell people maybe a little bit about where they're building the portfolios because you guys have been working, I think, in Google Sites for a couple years. Yeah, yeah, we use Google Sites for our digital portfolios. I mean, exactly, and audio is the same thing. Um, we started audio a couple years ago before we had the iPod Touch with a camera built into them. Um, with audios, we actually, because our 7th and 8th grade uh, students all have one-to-one -one laptops, and uh, last year or two years ago, we started where our chorus kids would record themselves using GarageBand and then upload their recordings into their their own web portfolio using Google Sites um, to basically put it on their own website that the teacher could just go around and click on and play. Um, the first time we did this, I asked the kids, you know, what did you think? Was it harder? Was it, you know, was it easier for you? And the, the student that I talked to, uh, uh, a cute little young girl, very precocious, and she's like, yeah, Mr. Kelly, this was okay, but it was a lot easier when Mr. Lancaster did all the work for us. Which, of course, makes sense, right? When the kids, you know, weren't the ones that are actually doing the legwork of it. Which, of course, that's what we want. We want them to kind of know how to do it and kind of digitize their own work so as they take it forward, um, they're building their portfolio as they go. So are they able to upload the MP3 just right into Google Site, and does it give a player, or how does that work when they put that on their page? Yes, exactly. They upload it as an attachment, and there's a, a Google Gadget, which is a Google Audio Player that's built right into it. So all the teacher does, and the next step, if you want to get this far, is they go to a, a, the teacher's website that has a Google Form built into it, and they copy and paste the link to that address. So the teacher from their end just sees a list of a spreadsheet with all the different links on it. They just click each student's name, it pulls up, and at that point they can click play and listen to the audio piece. This does two things. Things. One, it digitizes the work, obviously. The kids are digitizing themselves. They're the ownerships of that. They own that. It also does where... Um as they go forward, the, the let's say the high school course teacher can now listen back to what they were like in 8th grade and 7th grade and so forth. So they want to hear how much progress they've made over the years. It's already done. It's built right into it for them. Yeah, that's awesome. We want to do a shout out to Cindy Lane who is being our, our videographer today. You know, don't say, yes, we're going to do two hours of this. Um, I want to ask you about students at conferences. Your students at BLC and other places have been doing a lot. What is the the benefit of that and what encouragement would you give to others who might not have had students coming to conferences helping with professional development? Uh, I can't recommend it enough. We do a lot of it. Um, I think it's a hugely important piece of this. One, um, some of our techiest kids that are you know savvy as far as the technology stuff, we as education, we're not giving them a lot. They can figure a lot of this stuff out for themselves, generally speaking. What we need to give them then is the opportunity for them to communicate with other people, for them to have audiences, for them to be able to present in front of 30 teachers. I mean, imagine how important that is. Uh, you mentioned BLC. We had one of my presentations there was on students as tech support. Um, one thing we'll never have enough of in, in education is tech support. We just don't have the money for that. But there are students in every single school in the country in the world that are capable in the sense of they have the technical skills, but they don't necessarily have the maturity. And that's what's a good way for them to learn that. I mean, for them to kind of put them in situations that are real. Um, you know, maybe having a student as a teacher webmaster. That gives a teacher that's maybe a little bit more hesitant of them, you know, having their own web page. Well, they have a student that kind of does the technical pieces of it. They can do the content piece of it. And what a win-win for everybody. And I would think communication skills too, right? You talk to the students a lot about just how you would interact when you're tech support. Absolutely. Being very professional. That's the thing. And, it can, and I want them to learn how to do that in a place that's very safe. You know, they talk to the teacher all the time. It's okay if they make a mistake. Well, that's how we learn how to do that. Bringing them to conferences like this one, we're here. Um, I'll be having some students come tomorrow and they get an opportunity to see what we do. You know, a lot of times students don't see us learning you know, teachers learn and they don't realize that we're out there learning just like they are. And for them to see us in that kind of learning environment, I think it's a fantastic thing for everyone. So if people aren't following you on Twitter or reading your blog, where can they find you? Uh, KernKelly.com, Twitter, KernKelly. Uh, my blog is TheTechCurve.com. Uh, That's it. That's it. So lots of gurus here in Maine and lots of good learning. So thanks a lot.